This is the sound of the early internet and in this video I'll take a look back at 10 popular websites in their early days and how they've changed. I'll use the help of the Internet Archive's Wayback Machine to go back in time to see homepage snapshots of 10 famous websites. Firstly, let's look at arguably the most useful website on the internet, Wikipedia. One of the first user generated content sites, Wikipedia was launched in January 2001 and now receives over 500 million unique visitors per month to over 40 million articles. In August 2001, eight months after they started, they had 8,000 articles on the website. By 2002, they had over 48,000 articles. A year later, they had racked up 146,000 articles and a splash of colour started to appear on their homepage. By 2007, this had grown to 1.6 million articles and they adopted the globe design which remains to this day. Now let's take a look at Reddit. Reddit was founded in 2005 by two university roommates Steve Huffman and Alexis Ohanian. They called it the front page of the internet. Going back to 2005 you can see a simpler version with no pictures or videos. It is now one of the top 25 websites in the world. Random fact, Alexis designed the alien mascot for the site which is called Snoo and he is also married to Serena Williams. Alexis that is not the mascot. Another interesting fact, Snoop Dogg and Jared Leto are both investors in Reddit. On to Netflix. I'm sure most of you will be familiar with the world famous streaming site, but did you know Netflix started out as a DVD rental company? It was founded in 1997 by Reed Hastings and Mark Randolph. They would ship DVDs to your door, you keep them as long as you want and then return them in a prepaid envelope, all for only 20 bucks a month. In 2003, you can see the familiar red branding and new logo. Netflix continued its successful DVD rental business throughout the noughties until 2010 when they made the bold step into online streaming. Netflix went from the fastest growing customer of the United States Postal Service's first class service to the largest source of internet streaming traffic in North America in the evenings. In 2010, they were promoting their streaming service side by side with their DVD rental business. They eventually dropped their DVD rental business completely and went all in on video streaming. Where would the world be without Google? This is the current Google homepage. The Google logo is often replaced by a Google Doodle, which usually honors a historical event or figure. However, back in the day, Google looked like this. Well, not quite, they were just preparing for launch. When they did launch in 1998, the site looked like this. Google was originally called Backrub, which was a web crawler built by Larry Page and Sergey Brin. This project eventually turned into Google. You can still see what Backrub looked like on Wayback Machine, as well as the Stanford University homepages of Google founders Larry Page and Sergey Brin. Let's take a look at eBay. They started in 1995 and is currently the world's 10th largest internet company by revenue as of November 2019. They generate a revenue of $10.75 billion a year. eBay started out as Auction Web before the owner changed the name to eBay, which comes from Echo Bay Technology Group, the name of the consulting firm set up by the founder. In 2001, eBay was the largest e-commerce site in the world. Fun fact, Beanie Babies accounted for 10% of all listings on eBay in 1997. Another interesting fact, you cannot sell any objects of Iranian, Cuban or North Korean origin. You are also prohibited from selling any souls, ghosts or other items whose existence can't be verified. On to the current number one e-commerce site in the world and you guessed it, Amazon. The website sells practically anything you want. However, when Jeff Bezos first started it, they only sold books. Check out that logo, Earth's biggest bookstore. They've come a long way. By 1997, they updated the logo incorporating orange into the brand. A mere two years later, in 1999, they were selling books, music, games, DVDs, toys and electronics. This picture probably sums up Amazon's growth a bit better. You could say he's not in the book business or the e-commerce business. He's in the empire business. Let's take a look at LinkedIn. LinkedIn was founded in May 2003. After one year, they had 100,000 registered users. By the end of 2005, they grew to over 1.6 million users, and in 2009, they reached 32 million. 
It's 2019 now and they have over 300 million active users per month and 40% of them visit daily. Another interesting fact, you can increase your LinkedIn views by 11 times just by including a photo. You all know Facebook and probably seen the movie. Facebook launched in 2004 and used to be called The Facebook. This is one of the earliest screenshots on Wayback Machine. If you're wondering who this guy is, it's not Mark Zuckerberg or Al Pacino as some originally thought. It's actually musician Peter Wolf. The Facebook eventually became known as just Facebook and they acquired the domain name facebook.com for a mere $200,000. Twitter launched in 2006 but it wasn't until 2010 that they started monetizing the site with ads and promoted tweets. They started off with a 140 character limit but it has now increased to 280 and it's no longer just text, you can post videos and pictures. Fun fact, Ashton Kutcher was the first person to reach a million followers on the platform. Finally, let's go back in time to check out the early days of YouTube. You know what the current site looks like because you're looking at it right now. Let's check out YouTube in 2005. According to Wikipedia, the original idea of YouTube was a video online dating site. That explains why they had these drop down options on the homepage. That idea didn't take off so they started accepting uploads of any video hence the YouTube we know today. The first video posted on the site was by one of the founders, Jared Karim, who posted a video titled Me at the Zoo. I bet he didn't think this 18 second video would be viewed over 77 million times. By 2006, the website started to look a lot more familiar and in October 2006, less than 18 months after they started, Google bought them out for $1.65 billion in stock. That's not a bad deal. Fun fact, YouTube was actually founded by three former employees of PayPal. These three pals are definitely well paid now. There you go, popular websites through the ages. If you found this video interesting, feel free to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.